we uh, remember him always. Sister Ellen always, Evans, Sir Evans, yesterday, COVID 19, we've known her forever a day. So we're encouraging and lifting up that family too. I'm going to take just a moment because I think it's important, Sister Nazme, for us to remember those just not that we have on our sick list. But there's somebody that you know that's standing in the prayer. I want you to call the name out. Raise your hand. I can call the name out and we'll put them in this. It's all right. I mean, I can do stuff like I want to put a gong and catch Brian's mom. And I remember girls mother in Washington, D.C. I, I can remember Chris saying to her, my brother saying, Every morning, every day, you are let the Lord know who you're praying for. I could have just said, Who are we doing now to pray for? But somehow we got to get on the wall. Let's go to God. So is there anybody? We're going to take time to do this. Anybody that's standing in prayer? Yes. The day family and the loss of a loved one. Yes. Who? Marie Fryer. We lifted up Sister Marie Fryer. Matt Allison. Elder Yuma Cole. The Bradshaw family. Amen. Yes. Brian. Brian was his classmate. Matt Hoffman. McGowan. Justine McGowan. Justine. So that's the thing. Now you know this prayer was here. Amen. I do wish for us to remember, uh, especially uh, Brother Bradshaw, as they prepare to bury his mom. And I don't want to forget that. Yes, sir. That's Javon Green. Javon Green. Uh, amen. Somebody say amen. 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 So y'all, hands up, bow, and y'all pray. Pray with me.
formally if you are offering today. If you have a donation you might already give it to uh, the finance committee, what we ask you to do is just raise your hand and trust the owners will stop by and pick your donation up. And now if you don't raise your hand, it ain't gonna bother you. Amen. Amen. But if you have your hand up here, come see you. This song uh, is called Glory to His Name. A friend of mine asked that we do it. And so we're going to sing this song, Glory to His Name. Uh, he's a tall gentleman. Uh, 
I believe somewhere along the lines that he possessed some of my heart. Mm -hmm. And that uh, it would be mighty nice if he would give it back. <laughs> and uh, we're, not, we're not wrong about that. He is the airborne uh, paratrooper, retired. Uh, he has done many, many different vocational aspects with government agencies and, and certainly he is a prolific and dynamic man of God. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, following uh, our symbolic chant, we will hear from the Reverend Doctor Leroy Law. And I would like you to receive and hear him according to his grace and his ability to proclaim the unadulterated word of God. Somebody say, Preach, Dr. Law. Preach, Dr. Law. Amen. Call me there. Said, 
we who worship God in a new way, as the third race are Christians. Paul wants us to know that in Jesus, those who were found at war and made to be at peace, we have peace with both men, with God in Jesus Christ. Epistemology. That is Greek. That word means the theory of mind and psychology. We set in a new way. And God told Isaiah, I'm going to do a new thing. Come on. I'm going to bring somebody that you can believe in that's going to be a leader and, and he can show you the right way. He is our peace. Isaiah called him the Prince of Peace. He is telling us that Jesus is the ground for peace for both Jew and Gentile. And in other words, Jews could never earn with God through their ritual. There are sacrifices and there are attempts to keep the law. Regardless of what they did, they would always be sons. And let that be a mention to you. You can't cook enough pies and sell enough cakes. You got to have God with you and you have to be in Christ. Amen. In order for you to move forward. Come on. Yes. You can't run the church because you don't pay the bills. Amen. And what sister so and so is doing is all right because you got to. What Paul was saying, mind your business. Mm. And do what you need to do. Because there's enough work mm. on God's plantation for everybody Woo! Yes. to work forever. Mm. And be at peace. Yeah. And bring harmony to the job. Mm. Enjoy it when you come through the doors of the church. It's a path of what you want me to do. What can I do, Pastor, for the day? What can I do next week? Be joyful about it. Don't be grudging hard against one another. Because that will bring a division. The main deal in the church is to be together in faith. And in faith, we'll have strength. I'm standing before you this morning because I believe in God. Mm -hmm. I was a very serious accident. Broke both legs, my neck, my back, my left hand, had a concussion. And I don't know what else I had. I was out about six months. Mm -hmm. My brother took care of me, come and sit three times a day. And I'm still coming over his house. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful to him. Amen. 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 But my mother taught us growing up that we shouldn't have any division. Amen. So his house is just like that. My sister, his wife, she got company down here, so she, was, she didn't come with me. But they have been trained the right way. Don't be grudging hard toward anyone. We are told that Jesus has broken down that wall, that middle petition. The phrase broken down means to dissolve something, coherent into parts to destroy. And dying Jesus brought some things to the abrupt end. Notice what he destroyed when he died. Paul mentions the middle wall of the petition. This refers to the wall that stood between the court and the Gentiles and the court of Israel in ancient temple. This wall was about four feet tall. I'm on. Let me tell you about this wall. I've never been here, but my brother-in-law had, and they schooled me great. Here's what's going on. You know that wall that people go to put prayers in? The Jews be watching. And as soon as you leave, they go wash all that down and take the paper out there and all. <laughs> That's still going on today. Now, it's written, it's written in, uh, it's written in Hebrew.
signal greet the glory. The sign reads, No farmer may come within this barricade which surrounds the sanctuary and enclosure. Anyone who is caught doing so will have himself to blame for his ensuring death. So if you can imagine a country section over there for Jews, Muslims, incidentally, Israel got some of everybody in the world in it. Everybody in the world. Hebrew. And you got Jews that are not Hebrew. You got Greeks. You got African Jews. And just Africa. And the ones you see that that curl that come down on the side, those are Orthodox Jews. Now over there, they're the most disrespectful people you can meet. The state takes care of them. And they feel that they're the only ones that have the right to do anything. You don't have the right to do that. So, Paul was talking about that. For those who do not know the Lord, those walls still exist. Come on. I testify to the fact that the presence of the Gentiles in that area considered so sacred by the Jews, it's nearly tolerated, even if you do. Ooh. They would be fine if you didn't come. Oh. But because the country relies so hardly on uh, tourism, they don't say come. You can just they you ain't invited. <laughs> you can just come up if you want. But Paul was trying to tell us that this is not me. Some of us come near the wall and pray for Jews and for the peace of Jerusalem. As soon as we walked away from the wall, the Jews came behind us and prayed over the spots. Woo. But for those of you, the Lord, they have discovered that all walls of division have been torn down for them. In Jesus, there is no Jew. There is no Gentile. There is only the Christian, mm. the redeemed believer in Christ. Yes, sir. Notice a couple of powerful verses that teach the truth. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, nor circumcision, nor uncircumcision, barbarian, and sexism, bond, nor free, but Christ is all in all. Galatians 3 and 28 tells us there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male or female, for ye all are one in Christ. Amen. This does not mean that you have to lose your nationality. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This does not mean that you've got to lose who you are. In Christ there is only one believer. There is only believer and unbeliever. That should cause us to examine our prejudices. Don't be prejudiced and judge no. Because you'll be wrong yeah, on two fronts. You'll be wrong in God's name for you, and you'll be wrong because you are not here to judge. Come on. Amen. Judge me in says the Lord. He destroyed the spiritual wall, having abolished in his flesh the impotent. That word means hostility. Between the Jew and the Gentile rested in the law of commandments contained in the ordinance. The Jews despised the Gentiles because they dishonored and disgraced the law of God. The Gentiles despised the Jews because they sought to keep the law. The Jews within their strict dietary laws their laws address, their laws govern some aspect of their social and religious lives, hated Gentiles, mm. who lived outside of the law and did as they pleased. Mm. The law stood as a great wall of division between the two groups. 
While there is no hostility between the Jews and the Gentiles, the greatest hostility exists between God and man. All men, regardless of whether they are Jew or Gentile, I might add, I was more than 40. I knew what a Gentile was. I didn't know. I've been going to church all my life, but I didn't know what a Gentile was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't this. Mm -hmm. I was a grown man before I found out what a Gentile was. Mm -hmm. Now, somewhere along the line, some pastor should have told that congregation. Woo! I was in a lot of different congregations. What a Gentile. That's why you can't judge and you can't assume because you'll be wrong. Yeah. You can look out there and you say, well, oh, Leroy, I don't know what a Gentile is. <laughs> <laughs> You've been right. <laughs> Jesus Christ takes both Jew and Gentile to make himself one new man. He take, it takes two of them. It makes one new man. The Lord took those two groups who were opposite and so opposed to one another and created a brand new person. He takes sinners and makes from them bodies of bodies of Christ. In Christ, our differences disappear. We are made right with God, and apart from the deeds of the law, we are made right with one another. In Jesus, everything stands between the people of the straw. Paul says that Jesus Christ abolished in his flesh the hostility between us. Amen. To run the opportunity, to deprive our forces of power. In other words, by fully keeping the law of God, Jesus fulfilled the law of God. Christ, at the end of the law, Granted righteousness to everyone that believed it. Through his death, Christ recommended the law inappropriate. He holds no claim over us any longer. We are free from it. The power of condemnation. It serves the purpose of exposing sin. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No. Have not known sin. By the law. Now let me make it clear. The law I'm referenced to is the law of Moses. The Jews had about 600 and some different things that they had to adhere to to be considered righteous. Now, could you live with that? Let me put it this way How many can live with the Ten Commandments? <laughs> <laughs> we have got ten commandments. Now you know the Jews couldn't live with all of that. Mm. And that's why Isaiah told, prophesied that God is going to do a new thing. And that was to bring Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm closing now. He accomplished our reconciliation. The word reconcile means bring to a state of harmony. The Lord Jesus in his death destroyed the walls of separation that stood between the Jew and the Gentile. Between man and God, he was able to take all wiring parties and bring them together in himself and make an eternal peace. He has brought man together with man and he has brought man together with God. The ultimate goal of the Lord Jesus Christ was to celebrate the speaker. Isaiah said he's going to do a new thing. Here's what he did. He brought the Jew and the Gentile together. Yeah. Oh. And Jews were famous for bringing sojourners. Mm -hmm. Let me hear about that speech. Mm -hmm. He brought them all together and made them forget their war faction Woo! and come together as one. The ultimate goal was to reconcile sinners to God. Hell bound sinners made them one with God in himself. He accomplished this when he died. He abolished our redemption. Jesus did all 
this when he gave himself a perfect sacrifice. He sacrificed himself on Calvary. So that you and I could be free. Free from sin. But there were other captivities for us. We can never forget that. He did this by becoming subject to the law. But when the fullness of time has come, yes, sir. God sent forth his son and made a woman made under the law to redeem him and were under the law. They might receive the adoption of son. Yes, sir. He did this by becoming the subject to the law. But when the fullness of time had come, it was time to give in. By bearing its penalty, Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Amen. If you remember all of those different laws that the Jews were that was a curse. You, you couldn't live up to that. You can't do the Ten Commandments. So he had to abolish that. He delivered a message of peace. The word peace appears in the past three times. Mm -hmm. Peace between people speak of harmony, unity, and concord. That is what Jesus accomplished between the Jew and the Gentile. Mm -hmm. He speaks of peace between man and God. And it refers to a tranquil state of a soul assured by his salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing, him in the content of his earthly life of whatever sort it is. This is exactly what Paul did. We could never get to God out on our own. Left to ourselves, we would have continued to wander as the Israelites did. Trying to get home. Yeah. And I'll say this and I'll close. God told Moses, take the Israelites to the Red Sea. Come on. Don't try to cross. Well, mm -hmm. turn right and wait. <laughs> Moses' sister had a problem with that and she said, why are we waiting? When we can just go straight across. Come on. Moses told her, because God said so. Amen. And then God spoke to her and said, put your right hand in your bosom. She did so. And then pulled it out. It was white as snow. Woo! He said, put it back in there. And then it was her natural color. What he was saying was, I am your God. I am in charge. I am who I am. That's right. mm -hmm. And I am all of what I am. Come on. Have mercy. Mm -hmm. If you know where the peace between you and God, you should come before him to praise him for his grace in his life. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but know that there is still a wall of petition. Yes, sir. And may God bless us as we move forward. Thank you for coming and indulging me this morning. When you say it all you know,